conservative new media viewers, LA Lakers fans around the world, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, what is up? It's me, PFE, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert, and we're here to discuss the Lakers' loss tonight, 115-100 to to the Phoenix Suns in Phoenix, Arizona. With the defeat, the Lakers fall to 12-30 and on the year. Suns improve to 25-18. and Let's go over stats quickly before we talk more about the game. Goran Dragic led the Suns with 24 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. He was big down the stretch of this game. Isaiah Thomas came off the bench. He also had 24 points, 4 assists, 5 steals. Eric Bledsoe, the third of the three-headed point guard or guard attack that they use, 17 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals. The Lakers were led by Nick Young <clears throat> with 24 points off the bench, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. Nick had a terrific game. He had a kind of a tough time at the very end of the game with a few turnovers, but he played great overall, and it's good to see that his shooting slump is definitely in the past as we, he started to show last game. Wesley Johnson, 12 points, 4 assists. Jordan Hill, 12 points, 9 rebounds. Ed Davis, 8 points, 11 rebounds. Wayne Ellington, 9 points, starting for Kobe. And Jeremy Lin, who started for Ronnie Price, 10 points, 3 rebounds, 10 assists. Jeremy played 31 minutes, shot 4 of 9 from the field, including 1 of 2 from 3-point range. He was one of two also from the free throw line. Three steals, no block shots, three turnovers, three personal fouls, and his plus minus was a minus four. As I mentioned, both Ronnie and Kobe missed this game. Ronnie, I believe, to kind of heal up an elbow that he injured, and Kobe just for rest, I guess his body's kind of giving him some trouble or still, he's still sore and stiff after playing the game against Cleveland a few days ago. What happened in the game, as I explain in the short video, and we did make a short video about this game, so if you'd like to check that out, you can go do that, or you can watch that first, watch this, whatever you want to do. The Lakers were very good in the first half. They were really competitive. They out-hustled Phoenix for the entire first half, and... TNT, which is where the game was shown here in the United States. It's one of the, it's just a television network. Uh, they put up a graphic showing kind of what are called hustle plays or effort plays. And it was free throw attempts, offensive rebounds, and second chance points. Uh, second chance points, I've explained in another video, is you're on offense and you miss a shot then you get an offensive rebound, and then you score after getting the offensive rebound. So instead of scoring on the first try, you score on the next try. Uh, that's what that means. And those are hustle statistics because offensive rebound, you have to work hard to get offensive rebounds. Usually the defense is closer to the basket, so they will turn around and box you out. And so for you to get an offensive rebound, you got to work hard to get on the inside of your man to be able to be in that position. Free throw attempts are considered hustle plays because it means you're, you're, you're going to the basket. You're making moves to get fouled rather than just shooting jump shots where you're not going to get fouled. So you have to put more effort into plays usually that result in your being fouled. And, of course, second chance points is related to offensive rebounds. So that's that's another effort type of a play. So we went into halftime tied at 51. But then Phoenix came out at a different level in the third quarter. They came out much more focused. They were intent on imposing their will on the Lakers. And... They did outscore L.A. by 10 points in the in the third quarter, so that they did get control. But for most of the quarter, the Lakers fought them off. They were able to hang in there 
even with Phoenix picking up the, the intensity. And a lot of that had to do with Jeremy. And when Jeremy went out of the game late in the third quarter, Phoenix was up by six points. And when Jeremy came back into the game, midway or so through the fourth quarter, then L.A. was down like 17 points. So that's pretty much that window of when he went out to when he came back is when the game was pretty much lost. And look, it's you're playing young players. You're playing Jordan Clarkson, who's a terrifically talented player, but he's a rookie. You're on the road. You're playing a very good team. Phoenix is, has, a, has a real chance to make the playoffs in the West. Uh, they're going to have to fight off Oklahoma City and some other teams to do that. But they're good, and they're getting better. They're getting better, and I mentioned this in the, the short video, because they just added Brandon Wright, who is a backup power forward and center, and he's... He made his presence known in this game. So Phoenix is only getting more difficult to face. So you have a young Lakers squad, new coach, new teammates. I mean, the whole squad, almost the entire squad is new, or many of them are. And you're going against a very good team that wants to make the playoffs and can't afford to lose games, especially on their home court. So even though... Even though, yes, the game was lost when Jeremy was out. Yeah, Byron could have put him back earlier. Uh, it, it wasn't that bad. Phoenix made a couple of plays in a row early in the fourth quarter or middle to kind of put it out of reach. And Byron didn't have a he didn't have a ton of time to try to make substitutions. He he could have he could have, but I, I'm not gonna. I'm not super upset. Uh, the truth is, from the long-term perspective or from the Magic Johnson perspective, whatever you want to call it, it's probably better if the Lakers don't win a whole bunch this year. Now, they're not trying to lose, but in order to keep Phoenix's draft pick that they believe that they have, uh, they need to finish, I think, in one of the worst five records in the league. And so, well, maybe you, you don't quite go all out to win every single game. Again, I'm not saying Byron wanted to lose. I don't think he did. I think the game just got away from them, the Lakers, quickly in a very quick period of time. And uh, they just weren't able to adjust to it. And look, young players are going to make mistakes. And guys that are just playing with one another for the first time, they're going to make mistakes. Whether it's, I don't care how good you are. You look at Cleveland, they have three all-star players. They're big three, um, Irving, Love, and LeBron. Those guys make mistakes all the time, even though they're great players. They just don't, they're not used to one another. So you do that, plus you bring in new guys like Tarek Black and rookies like Clarkson. You're going to have errors. It's just going to happen. So so when Jeremy came back in, the score was Phoenix by 17. And then he and Nick Young went on this like little personal mini run that got the, the they cut the lead all the way down to six points. And they had a chance to cut it to five points. Uh, so they cut that lead from seven, they cut it from 19 to like six in like three minutes of game time. This is late in the fourth quarter now. Then they were trying to get the ball to Nick a little bit more. He had a couple turnovers. Lakers missed a couple things. They had a couple tough plays go against them, including the ball hitting the referee, which was supposed to be a pass to Jeremy that ended up into a Goran Dragic layup. And then there was a jump ball that Jordan Hill won, but it went to Goran Dragic. That was another layup. So just a few plays that just it just kind of went away from them. This game was much closer than the score. The Lakers put out a lot of effort. They played well. Jeremy played great in this game. And a different people, I went on Twitter and I said, I thought this was the best game of for him as a starter. And a couple of people, including Brent Yen and somebody else I can't remember right now, said that they thought that the Minnesota game 
which was the infamous boneheaded plays game in which basically began the demotion of Jeremy Lin, but he put up 18 points and 11 assists in that game. So there were people who felt that game was better, and statistically, it was better. The reason why I like this game better for me, number one, Minnesota sucks. They're just not a good team at all. So it's 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 easier to look good against a bad opponent than a good opponent. Phoenix is legit. Number two, I, I can't remember where that Phoenix game was, if it was on the road or at home. This game was at, I think it was at home. This game was on the road and a, a hostile crowd. And for Jeremy, Jeremy, the knock on Jeremy all year has been, oh, he doesn't play as well on the road. So there was those two things, better opponent on the road. Number three is, in this game, Jeremy played Byron Bull. He played the way Byron Scott wanted wants him to play. And so he ran the system and did it Byron's way, which is tougher for Jeremy than to play his own way. So he that was the third thing. So he played Byron Ball. And the fourth thing was is that Jeremy ran the team. With Kobe out and Ronnie out, the team really didn't have a veteran leader, particularly someone handling the ball. Uh, And Jeremy filled that gap. And part of what he had to do in that role was he had to run the offense, but he had to keep the team calm whenever Phoenix made runs. And in the past, and we've talked about this and I've criticized Jeremy plenty recently, including recently for this. In the past, Jeremy would have gotten caught up in the speed of the game. And he probably would have made some some decisions that he didn't want to make. He didn't do that in this game. Sure, he had three turnovers, but he had 10 assists, which is a three-to-one turnover, assist-to-turnover ratio, which is great. <clears throat> so everything that he could possibly do or could be asked to do, he did in this game. He ran the team. He played Byron's system. He played good defense. He was the leader of the team to keep things calm with no Kobe around. He shot the ball well. He dished a great assist. He had a good balance between shooting and passing. I mean, this was about as good of a game as you could play for Jeremy under the circumstances. So I just, I don't think it, I think this is about as good as it gets. And for, for where Jeremy is at in his career, where he is at with the Lakers and with the teammates that he has around him. I, I just thought this was a fantastic game from him. He played great. And uh, I think if he continues to play like this, there's a good chance he can start again for Byron. I'm not saying whether he should or shouldn't or any of that, but just this is the way Byron wants him to play. And I, I think that this is a big step forward for him personally. And honestly, it's a big step forward for the team. They need to be able to play consistently well without Kobe around. Because that's going to be more and more the case as we keep going forward here is what it looks like anyway. And a lot of these guys are playing for contracts. Many of these people are on expiring deals or one-year deals, which I, I, that's expiring also including Jeremy. These guys need to show that the Lakers want to keep them around. And so I just, the team played really well tonight. The only negative from this game, obviously except for the loss, was that Tarek Black hurt his ankle. He he turned his ankle, I guess, pretty badly, uh, I think late in the fourth quarter. And he had to be helped off, but x-rays were negative. Thanks for the people on Twitter who told me that, and I guess he's okay. So ankle is the one injury where it can look super bad when it happens. It can look like, oh, no, this guy's going to be out for months. And then it can be relatively okay pretty quickly. 
Now, I don't know how long Tarek's going to be out, but I'm, I'm glad it was an ankle rather than like a knee or something like that. So uh, I, you've seen guys where they'll get uh, – it looks like they're totally destroyed in a game, and they go and get retaped, and they're back in the same game because it's, it just that's the way the ankle injuries tend to go. So I mean, that was about it. Like I said, there's I, I I'm I'm happy with this game. The Lakers played they played hard. They played well. Their depth was good. They're starting to work in the new guys and the guys coming back from injury, like Tarek, like Ryan Kelly. Jordan Clarkson's getting some run. He had some nice moments in this game, even though he he still has a long ways to go. Lucy on Twitter said that, and she's right. Jordan, he's still a rookie. He still has the jitters. He's still a little too excitable. We talk about that with Jeremy sometimes. You can see it in Jordan. He just, he wants to do a little bit too much. But he had a great follow-up dunk that will make all the highlight reels. I mean, I, I can't remember. Somebody missed a shot, and Jordan timed it, went in, jumped off of both legs, two-legged jump, dunked it with two hands. I mean, it was amazing. He has incredible athletic ability. I don't know if he's going to be a point guard or a shooting guard, but whatever he's going to be, he's going to be good uh, if he just stays with it. Just He's a rookie, and he's not getting a lot of playing time. So and that's part of what I think happened tonight, too. I think Byron wanted to play him some, wanted to get him some run. I mean, I know Byron said, well, we might shut Kobe down when we're out of the playoffs. Well, they're already out of the playoffs from any realistic perspective. They're not making the playoffs. So – I think part of it tonight was, hey, let's 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 play Jordan a little bit, let him work through some mistakes, and just kind of get a feel for things. And, and And I think that was part of why Jordan might have stayed in a little bit longer than he may have uh, if the Lakers were contending for a playoff spot in a realistic sense. So, okay, that is the overview of the game. That is the overview of how Jeremy did in the game, and how the team looked. Now let's talk about what was going on before the game, kind of the lead up to the game, before I discuss more of the quarter-by-quarter specifics of the game itself. Number one, there's been more discussion about is Kobe going to retire? Should Kobe retire? Is he going to retire? Doc, Dr. B., uh, told me on Twitter that Dr. Clapper, I believe, on Twitter, who's, uh, I believe he he's he's in L.A. I think he might have ties to the Lakers, but I think he's kind of tuned in to the Lakers. What he said, apparently, was that one of the concerns for Kobe right now is his other Achilles tendon meaning his right Achilles tendon, the Achilles tendon, he did not tear. And Kobe himself mentioned this in an interview like yesterday or the day before. So I think Dr. Clapper is correct here. So what happens in this instance, apparently, I'm not a medical professional or anything, is once you tear the one tendon, one Achilles tendon, then the other tendon can start to wear down a little bit more too, probably because you're putting more wear and tear on it to compensate for the repaired tendon, right? So if you have followed some of the post-game and and practice comments that Kobe has made this year, one of the things he said is that his Achilles tendons are sore. So it's not just one, both of them are sore. And so I think there really is some concern from Kobe and from the the, the training staff. You know, he might be wearing down that other tendon. And we don't want him to tear the other Achilles tendon. So I think that's part of where the caution is coming from here. Also, it's important to remember with Kobe, I'm, I'm almost certain that one of his knees is arthritic meaning there's no more cartilage in there. So you're talking about a bone-on-bone situation, meaning there's no cushion there. 
Now, that's why I believe he gets all the, he's gone to Germany and done the different re- restorative therapy. But I don't think you can, I, I don't think he's actually regenerated cartilage, although I could be wrong about that. But if you're in a situation where you've lost all your cartilage, you're going to have problems. I mean, you're going to have inflammation after games. And you can play through it. There have been, there are players that, they have that situation and they play through it, but eventually it kind of wears you down and it's hard to play through it and you need more breaks. So if you take those, if you take the knee stuff combined with this, we don't want to injure his other Achilles combined with what Kobe's been saying all year, which is, man, my body is super sore. Everything hurts. I think that's why they're being more cautious with him. I think that's what it is. The Lakers are not going to make the playoffs, and they were not going to make the playoffs if Kobe played every single game this year just because other teams are better than them. Uh, The West is stacked. It's loaded. So if that's the case, and you have Kobe on a contract for next year, well, why push him? There's no real reason to push him. He achieved what he wanted to achieve. He passed Michael Jordan. He's, I believe he was voted into the All-Star game. The last thing the team wants to do or that Kobe wants to do is to blow out his other Achilles. Even if he retired then, I mean, that's a serious and long rehabilitation. It's just not worth it. So I, I, Kobe may decide at the end of this year, that's it. Yeah, he he missed out on twenty five million dollars, but Kobe's worth, I would say, somewhere between two hundred twenty five million and I don't know two hundred seventy five million. Yeah, I mean, I, sure, two hundred twenty five million could be one tenth of his net worth, but he doesn't have to have it. I mean, he's he's going to be okay if he doesn't have it. And again, I mean, how much is it worth if you don't blow out your your body or your Achilles again? So, so that's, that's what's, that was being discussed more. And I think there's starting to be more of a real serious look at that, that it could be becoming more of a real possibility than it was earlier in the season. Now, as I mentioned, Ronnie was out with the, uh, uh, he still has the broken nose, which is recovering and his, uh, his hurt elbow. And Byron mentioned that, I guess that he might be interested in changing his starting lineup again. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean Jeremy's back in? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. The first thing I think about when I hear that is that I could see Ryan Kelly starting. Not because Wesley's not good, and I would imagine that Byron, well, you could either put Ryan Kelly as power forward or small forward. One, Ryan's a young guy. You want to see where he's at. Ryan's a good player, and Ryan's a shooter. He's a better shooter than Wesley is, and obviously he's a better shooter than Ed Davis is. So if you start Ryan, your spacing on the offense gets better. You're you're less clogged uh, on your offensive sets. So that was my first thought. It also could involve Tarek Black. It also could involve Jeremy. I don't know. We don't, we'll have to see. Like I said, Jeremy played great tonight. So if Byron was thinking about that, well, I think this is going to be something that pushes him further in that direction. Now, again, though, let's be honest here. Byron likes Ronnie Price a lot. So I'm not, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up here. It's just that Byron said he's thinking about it. So we'll, we'll see how it works out. Okay, let's discuss this game quarter by quarter. And again, if you're newer to these videos, I go through each of these quarters when I have the opportunity. I do this, most of the long videos, not all of them, with the focus being on Jeremy. But if there's something else that was happening and there's something, a great play by the Laker or another Laker like Jordan Clarkson's dunk, then we'll discuss that too. Okay, Jeremy was starting, so uh, he was on the floor to begin the game. The first thing I noticed in the game was that Eric Bledsoe called for a screen against Jeremy Lin. 
And what that means is Eric didn't want to try to beat Jeremy off the dribble by himself. He wanted to have somebody help him out by setting a screen. I'm not saying that's a bad play, but like I said, for all of the talk about Jeremy's bad defense, there's a lot of guys that don't really like going against him. And and so it's I mean that's basically what Eric Bledsoe was showing here. And Jeremy had some pretty good moments against Eric Bledsoe in the last game that these two teams played. Uh, so I'm sure Eric remembered that. And Jeremy was matched up against Eric Bledsoe on both ends of the court, at least for much of this game, or at least at the beginning of the game, rather than than Dragic. So Dragic was playing against Wayne Ellington more so. Early in the first, Jeremy had a blown assist to Jordan Hill. It was a pick-and-pop play. Jordan Hill came up, set the screen, and did not roll to the basket. He instead popped out like to where he likes to be, right around that uh, top of the key area, the semicircle above the free throw line. Jordan shot the ball and missed it. It's a good play, just sometimes a shot doesn't go in. Then Eric Bledsoe was scared of Jeremy blocking him from behind. So this is the type of thing where we, and we've talked about this many times. A defender will beat Jeremy, excuse me, the offensive player will beat Jeremy when Jeremy's on defense. The offensive player will go to the basket and then they'll pass when it looks like they've got an open layup because they're afraid of Jeremy blocking them from behind. And Jeremy was on Eric Bledsoe pretty good and he might have had a chance to block him. So it's, as I said, it's... It, it, this is something that helps Jeremy out on defense. He's really good at that play. He's blocked Tony Parker, Derrick Rose, many guys from behind, Isaiah Thomas, and they know that. They know once you beat him, it's not over yet. So I could see that was affecting Eric Bledsoe on that play. Then Jeremy was fouled off the ball, so he got no shots. Obviously, Phoenix was early in the game still, so Phoenix was not in the penalty, uh, which was automatic free throws then. Then Jeremy missed his first shot at the uh, of the game. He drove to the basket. He had It was a nice drive. I think he was going right to left. So he got into the lane and was right around Alex Len, the center for Phoenix, and he shot the ball up left-handed, and it was just short. It was a nice play, and Alex Len is a terrific shot blocker. He's probably legitimately seven foot tall in his bare feet. He's very tall, and he's very good at blocking shots. And uh, Jeremy got what he wanted. To be honest with you, I think he... Th- I, my guess would be that he thought Alex was going to make more of a play on the ball, and he didn't. So it's kind of like Jeremy was adjusting, even though he didn't have to adjust. And so it just the ball came up short. Then Jeremy had a defensive rebound. And I put a note here. It says, Jeremy running the offense well. And he was. He was playing Byron Ball. The way you can tell if the Lakers are running the offense that they want to run, which is, again, it's a kind of a combination offense between um, the Princeton offense and elements of the triangle system of Phil Jackson, is you'll you'll see like a little triangle on whatever side the ball is on. There'll be like a big man or usually a big man right about where the free throw line is, the elbow area where the free throw line connects with the lane. Then there'll be a guy in the corner and then there'll be whoever's bringing the ball up and there'll be little, like there'll be setting screens and little things will be going on in that triangle. And that was happening tonight. So they definitely, they were running what they wanted to run. They were running the system. And I thought Jeremy was doing a good job of of running that system rather than freelancing and kind of playing Jeremy ball. He was playing Byron ball and doing it well. Then Jeremy had his first score of the game, his first made field goal. He hit a three-pointer from the top of the arc. It was almost dead on straight, maybe slightly to the right. I... I think it was off the dribble, 
but I don't remember. I think someone had set a screen for him, and he came around and 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 just pulled up and shot it. It was a good, it was a nice play. It was a good shot, and he looked he looked confident and on his game. Jeremy looked much better tonight to start this game off than he looked in the last game. Remember, Alex on Twitter and and myself and other people were like, oh, man, you know, Jeremy didn't start off so hot in the last game, and I I can't remember right now who the game was against. It's just escaping me. Um, uh, Utah, I believe. Yeah. So he hadn't started in a while, and he hadn't had a lot of rhythm and work with the first unit, the first the starters. Tonight, it was the total opposite. He started off great. And this is what we want to see. And like I said, Jeremy could not have played better than he played tonight in, in a realistic way. He played fantastic, and he started off well, as opposed to how he started off the other game. And that's going to make an impression on the coaching staff. It'll show up in the, in the film. When the team goes over the film, they'll all see it. Okay, then moving on to middle of the first, Jeremy had an assist for a foul, which is he passed the ball to a player, and then the player would have scored, but they were fouled when they went to score. This was to Ed Davis, and Ed Davis got two free throws, which I think he missed both of them, but it still was a nice play by Jeremy. Then he had a tough defensive play where he fouled Dragic in transition. Dragic, Dragic scored the layup, and got the and one so but he had to do something he was trying to stop Dragic from scoring it just didn't work Dragic is a very good in transition Dragic is incredibly athletic he doesn't look like it necessarily but he's he's probably the most athletic guy on the Suns or maybe him and and Bledsoe are tied he's extremely athletic good body control Good jumping, good burst, good everything. And he's hard to stop in transition. Uh, and he's hard to stop when he's going up to the rim. Then Jeremy had his second score of the game. He drove from about a 45-degree angle or so on the right side of the basket and went up and scored over Alex Len. So uh, Jeremy was making good decisions. He was confident. He was attacking the shot blocker. One of the axioms of going against a shot blocker is go right at him. Take the ball right into him. With the, the, the thought being, if you get up into the shot blocker, like if you get into their body, it's diff- then they can't jump then to go up and block your shot. And so I like that Jeremy was aggressive on that play, and he went right at Alex Len. And he, he got the angle, and... Uh, It was a terrific play right off the glass. Okay, then he missed his second shot of the game, and this was Alex Len did block his layup. So Alex Alex got a little get back there. I did not see the play. I did not see the play because I was making a note at that time, but uh, Alex Alex got him back there. But uh, that's okay. Jeremy did well. Then I put... um, yeah, this was, I put this out on Twitter, and it was it was retweeted and favorited a lot. This is a, a play in which Jeremy will get no credit in the stats sheets or anything, but he made this play happen. He got the ball and ran out in transition, and there were two guys running with him. I think it was Jordan Hill and, and Wesley Johnson. Jeremy raced down the court. Phoenix wasn't set. They might have had, I think they only had two guys back. So it was like a three on two, something like that. Wesley ran to the right corner behind the three point line. Jordan Hill or Ed Davis, whoever it was, they sprinted to the rim, which is what they're supposed to do. Jeremy got to about the free throw line, which is kind of the point where you want to make your decision if you're running a fast break. The free throw line is kind of the, you want to make your decision by then, basically. He passed the ball to Ed Davis or, or Jordan, whoever it was, but nobody was guarding Wesley. And so Ed threw the ball out to Wesley. Wesley took a wide open three and he missed it. But then the the 
The Lakers got the offensive rebound. They passed the ball out to Wesley. Again, nobody was guarding him yet, and then he drilled a three-pointer. So what happened in the play was Jeremy had a hockey assist, a blown hockey assist, which is Jeremy made the pass to one guy, and then that guy passed the ball to the guy who scored. But in this case, he did not score on the first attempt. It's a hockey assist because in hockey, you do get an assist for that. If you pass to somebody and they pass to another guy for a score and it's kind of like a related play, both guys get an assist. The direct assister and then the, the indirect assister, the, 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 the second guy, the guy who made the initial pass, which is what Jeremy was in this play. Everything on the play was set up by Jeremy because he pushed the ball so that Phoenix couldn't set their defense. He broke down the defense because he, he, he himself went towards the rim, so they had to, the defender had to commit to him. And that meant there were two Phoenix players to guard three Lakers, and they had to make a choice. And the choice was they left Wesley open. Wesley got the ball, missed. Nobody ran and guarded Wesley. Wesley got the ball again, hit. Everything, all of that was created by Jeremy Lin. And like I said, there's that, there, there's no statistic for that. So, but it, he made it happen. That made the score 15 to 14 for the Lakers. And Phoenix took a timeout right after that, after that play. As I said in the long video of the Utah game, the last game, I, I had a feeling Jeremy could do well in this game because Phoenix plays fast. This is Jeremy's type of basketball. Transition, run, and gun. Now, to be fair to him, he played really well in the half court in this game. Like, he played well when, when, when Phoenix's defense was set and it was a slower game. But this is his kind of, of tempo. He wants to play quick. And if you play quick with him, a lot of times he's going to beat you. Although playing a team with three guards as good as what Phoenix has, that's a tougher situation. And it's a good matchup for Jeremy, and it's a good test for him playing against those 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 level of guards that he was going against tonight. But he held his own. He held his own, which is good to see. Okay. Then Jeremy came out of the game right uh, after that timeout. So Byron took him out after Phoenix had done that or or soon thereafter and i think it's jeremy got his second personal foul i think that's what it was at first i was like well why is he taking him out but then i realized he had picked up his second foul as i've mentioned before the way coaches tend to be in the nba uh in the first two quarters anyway if you get two fouls in the first quarter they'll take you out because they don't want you to have three fouls by the end of the first quarter and if you get three fouls in the, in the second quarter before halftime, they'll take you out because they don't want you to have four fouls before halftime. And it's just it's just kind of a strategy thing, and that's kind of a, uh, kind of like an unwritten rule. It doesn't always happen like that, but it happens that way a lot. And so Byron kind of went with that. He brought in he brought in Jordan, Carlos Boozer, and Tarek Black at that point in time, or right around then. So those three guys were in, and Jeremy was sitting down and really I didn't have a problem with it because you had the lead. If you didn't have the lead, maybe you, you stay with your starters a little bit longer, but you have the lead. Jeremy's got two fouls. In other words, maybe you can waste a couple minutes of game time while you're ahead or the, the score is close. So I, I, I didn't have any problem with that decision at all because you don't want Jeremy to get another foul. Okay. Soon thereafter, Nick came in as well. So now had four. He had four bench guys, and I believe Wes Johnson in at that point in time. And then, then TNT put up a graphic, and this was this was we just got into late into the first. This was I don't know four minutes left, three minutes and thirty seconds left in the first, and they put up young Lakers contract situation, and they showed maybe four or five players. Among them, Jordan Hill, and I think Nick Young, a couple other guys. In other words, hey, how long are these young Lakers going to be around? And we have to think about that. They didn't show Jeremy in that. 
I was like, why aren't they showing Jeremy? Jeremy's younger than Jordan Hill. Jeremy's younger than some other guy they're showing, maybe that's 27 years old. So you know, I guess, you know, they're just dissing Jeremy or they don't think he's relevant or maybe they've heard the buzz that Jeremy's not in the Lakers' future plans or whatever. I, they didn't show him. I was like, nah. I mean, I didn't care. I wasn't like all bent out of shape about it, but it was like, nah, that's kind of too bad. I mean, they, or they, they should have included him in that. Okay. Still late in the first. I made a note that says Lakers look young and energetic. They did. They look good. They were they were pumped up for the game. They were fully locked in for the game. Like I said, they came to win. And as good as Kobe is, and he's great, he's still a, a, a very impactful player. He's old, and he doesn't want to run, which is one of the reasons why he didn't like Mike D'Antoni's system. Everybody that was playing tonight with the possible exception of, of Carlos Boozer. These guys are young. They want to they wanna run, and they're good at running. And it looked like that. That's the way it looked. This is kind of like, this is what the Lakers are building towards. And it was fun to see. I mean, it's exciting basketball. It's much more exciting than watching slow basketball. Just if, if you had a, a, a choice, at least that's, I mean, that's how I feel anyway. Then I put, yeah, the Lakers offense, they're running the Princeton triangle stuff pretty well. And they also had another little set, which I guess is a variation where they had two, two guys right at the elbows. Like they had, usually they have one guy, one of the sets they were running, they had two different guys on it. So they were running little variations and different things. So I think the team is getting more comfortable with what Byron wants to do, what his offensive system is. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I think Byron's offensive system is great. I, I don't think it's great. But it's what he runs, and the team is getting more used to it, more comfortable with it, and that's good to see. That's going to help them play better as the year goes on. Then Jordan was in, and I put that Isaiah Thomas was, was going to work on him. I, he was starting to target him. And, look, Isaiah likes to shoot. Isaiah's not – I mean, he can pass the ball, but he's he's a gunner. He's a shooter. He's going to put the ball up for shots. And I think Isaiah's issue with the Lakers is that he wanted to be a Laker. And I think he feels like they didn't really make a move to try to get him. I believe that's kind of a chip on his shoulder whenever he plays the Lakers. So he just, I don't know, since then, since and that's this last summer, or I believe every time he plays them, he just goes all out. He's always looking to, to do well against them, and Jordan was taking the brunt of it late in the first quarter. After one quarter, Jeremy had five points, one rebound, and zero assist, as well as the two personal fouls that I mentioned earlier. Okay, that was one of his, that was a good quarter for him, certainly. Hey, okay, moving on into the second, Jeremy's still on the bench. And then I put Isaiah Thomas hits three over Jordan Clarkson. Isaiah going to work on Jordan. So the the rage <laughs> of Isaiah Thomas continued here. Isaiah's also, I, I think Isaiah and Nate Robinson are the two shortest players in the league. They're both probably about, I don't know, five, nine, something like that, realistically, even though they're probably listed taller than that. Uh, you know, like I said, both those guys have chips on their shoulders, which usually helps them. Maybe it's the, the short guy complex, short meaning relative to other NBA players. They're not short uh, among average, uh, average purse people, average men. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just, again, Isaiah just wanted to come out and just shoot like crazy, and that's what he was doing, and he was doing it well. Then I made a note, and this is what Lucy alluded to on Twitter, and I said earlier, Jordan's still too jittery to play a lot or in important spots. So as much as we were upset with Byron for not putting Jeremy back in sooner in the game, Jordan only played 17 minutes in this game. 
and Jeremy played 31. So, and you have to give Jordan some experience. I mean, again, you're, you're not going to make the playoffs, so you have to start developing your young players. Jordan is definitely better than he used to be earlier in, this, in the year in terms of running the offense and not going super quick on plays, but he there's still a lot of that left in him. And, and again, I said it's kind of comparable to what we see in Jeremy at moments. The difference is Jordan's a rookie and Jeremy's in his fifth year. That's why when I get impatient with Jeremy, it's like, look, you got to get past this. You've been around the league too long to keep doing this. Now, he hasn't played a lot, but it's just something you want to start getting better at it. You expect it out of a rookie, but you want Jeremy to get better at it, and he was better at it tonight. He was good at it. And put Phoenix was double teaming Nick Young on a pick and roll very hard. Uh, I'm not sure if Nick was hurting him at that time and they just wanted to slow him down, but they were really, uh, really focusing hard on him to stop him. Then Jordan had that super mega dunk off of a miss. Like I said, it was a great play. Isaiah Thomas messed up because he didn't box him out. I think Isaiah Thomas was probably running to the other end for a fast break. He didn't box out Jordan Clarkson off of the L.A. miss. And Jordan Clarkson just came from the left side of the court, just ran in, planted both of his feet, timed it, went up, dunked the ball with both hands, and then did a little pose afterwards, which was pretty sweet. I must say it was a nice play. And uh, uh, like I said, he's a very athletic guy and looking forward to him in the future, certainly. Okay. Then Jordan had a nice he had a nice steal that he got for the Lakers. That was a good play again. He was playing well in this game. I said he he played quite well. He he played well in this game. I'm perfect, but well. Then I made a note that says LA has a shot in this game. And at this point in time, we're midway through the second, I realized it's gonna be it's gonna be a real game now because Phoenix has let LA get confident. They weren't able to blow out L.A. early, kind of take their heart out. So now, now L.A. thinks they can win. So we're going to, you know, this is going to be a, a real game here. And it was uh, for much of the game. Jeremy came in after a timeout with seven minutes and 23 seconds left in the second quarter. At that point in the game, <clears throat> it was 37 to 35 for the Lakers. And he replaced Jordan Clarkson. The lineup at that point in time was Jeremy, Nick Young, Ryan Kelly, Ed Davis, and Jordan Hill. And I then made a note to myself that said, I think that this could become the new starting unit. So I'm not saying it will, but it could. Nick for Kobe, if you want to rest Kobe a little bit more, although when Kobe plays, he's going to start. It's just a matter of how much does he play. Ryan for Wes. Again, I think there's a, a natural that that could make sense. And as I mentioned before, Ryan Kelly is a d pretty good defender. He's much better than than a lot of people think that he is. I don't know if he's as good as West, but he's he's taller than West. And he's he's a good defender. So you're not losing a ton on defense by starting Ryan Kelly and you gain his offense and his shooting to get better spacing. And, of course, Jeremy Ferrani. So I think you're, you're not, again, when Kobe plays, Kobe's going to start. But I do think that when Kobe is not playing, you might see a little bit more of this lineup. Although Byron has said he likes to bring Nick off the bench. So maybe you won't see it. But it's something where I was like, yeah, I, I could see this lineup starting. This is a lineup that I think could do well starting. So we'll have to see. I mean, again, we'll we'll see how, how Byron decides. He is coming up into that period where the second group of starters he's done this season, It's a the, we're in that 15 to 20 game period where, or whatever where he likes to, if he's going to make a change, now might be a time when he changes it. Okay, then Jeremy had... A layup in transition. I did not get to see it. Again, I was taking a note. I think that was his third score of the game. 
Then we had a situation where Jordan Hill rebounded the ball and he was going to dribble it up over half court, which is what we saw the other day. I was like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> but this time, Jeremy basically demanded the ball and, and Jordan gave it to him. So that's good. I said, you, you can't do that. And, and, and Jeremy's like, you know, he got the ball and I was happy for him. It's like, yeah, stand up for yourself. Jordan's got to do what's right. He did. And it all worked out good. Right after that play, or very soon thereafter, Jeremy had his first assist of the game for a Jordan Hill dunk in transition. Great play, and like I said, I mean, Jeremy's rewarding Jordan Hill's trust. Like, hey, man, come on, trust me. Oh, yeah, I just set you up for a dunk. And then right after that, he set Jordan Hill up for a jumper. So as we said, they don't have a tremendous amount of chemistry together because they haven't played together. Jordan's a starter, and Jeremy hasn't been starting. So you got to develop the trust and the chemistry, and, and it was working well there. That made the score 41-36 to for the Lakers. Then Jeremy had a play where it was he did not play good defense. He overhelped uh, on the postman. So... Whoever had the ball in the post, Jeremy went down to guard him to help out his teammate. But he got a little too far away from Isaiah Thomas. The ball kicked back out to Isaiah Thomas, and he hit a three. Uh, Jeremy almost got back to him. He, he was close. He did contest the shot, but he was a little bit too far away. So it's like I said, there's a, a you, you have to... You have to know how much you can help, and you can't go beyond that. If you can't recover, then you've you've gone too far. You've you've left your man. There's too much distance you've left between yourself and your man to help out. So, in the future, leave a little bit less distance. In other words, don't go as far in to help out. But you've got to be able to cover your man. Okay. Then Jeremy had his first turnover of the game. I did not see this either. It was a, a pass in which Dragic stole the ball. And then Dragic came down and just missed a three-pointer, which was good because Phoenix is trying to make a little run here. And that miss obviously helped out, which was good. I said that was a bad sequence for, for Jeremy, the, the defense against Isaiah and then the turnover. But he, he corrected it. Said he, he it wasn't didn't become a little... Uh, Turnover bundle or overhyped bundle, which is good. Then TNT put up the, the statistics where the Lakers were winning the hustle stats, which I mentioned earlier, which is free throw attempts, offensive rebounds, and second chance points. Then he had another tough defensive play to Jeremy. He kind of lost track of Eric Bledsoe, and then Eric Bledsoe got a screen set for him and set up for a three. Fortunately, Eric missed a shot. It wasn't terrible defense by Jeremy. The, the, the problem was, was he lost sight of Eric Bledsoe for a moment. And and that, that was the part that wasn't great defense. The rest was wasn't was okay. Okay. Then we move on late in a second. I made a note that says Jeremy playing disciplined. Good. I said he played Byron Bull tonight. He played Ronnie Ball. He played the way that Byron wants him to play. And he played under control. He played steady. All of the little erraticness or, or volatility in his game was mostly gone tonight. And that's good. That's really good. That's, that's going to help him, not just with Byron Ball, but with any team he plays for. You have to be able to stay under control. And he did a really good job of that tonight. Then I put, and I noted this on uh, Twitter as well, Jeremy was on the right side of the court, kind of like the middle part of the lane extended to the right. So if you, again, if you were kind of midway down the lane between the free throw line and the basket and you drew a line out to the right, a straight line from there, that's about where Jeremy was. I think he was making a move against Dragic, he turned around to do a fadeaway jump shot, 
But when he went up, he saw that Dragic was on him pretty good, and he also saw that Ed Davis was open under the basket. So he jumped up, was going to shoot, changed his mind, passed the ball to Ed Davis. Then Ed Davis saw that Wayne Ellington was sitting at the top of the, of the, of the arc wide open. He passed the ball to Wayne Ellington, and Wayne made it three. And that was just perfect. It reminded me, actually, the play Jeremy made in that situation reminds me of what Kobe does. You go up, you think you, 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 you look like you're going to shoot, then you see a man open, you make the pass. Kobe's very good at that. And that's exactly what Jeremy did on that play. And this was another hockey assist. Jeremy will get no credit for that play, but he made the play. He made that play happen. If he does not make the decision to shoot, to pass, there is no three-pointer and there is no wide open shot. So it was, it was just a great decision by him. And that made the score 46 to 40. Okay, then another blown assist to Jordan Hill for a jump shot. In this part of the game, I, I think, Jeremy, I put slow down. He's getting a little, just slightly too amped up. Like I said, he was great about this tonight. You don't want to take away Jeremy's uh, explosiveness or his, his speed because that's one of the things that makes him so good. But you still have to play under control. I thought he was just a little tiny bit under control, uh, out of control there. And, and but again, he kept it, he regained his composure quickly, the same way that he did earlier on that tough sequence and on defense, and then the turnover. Okay, then he had an assist for a foul, passed the ball right at the rim to Ed Davis. Ed Davis missed the layup, and, but he was fouled and got shots. It was almost an and one situation that came. With, I believe two minutes and thirty sec, third minutes and thirty nine seconds left in the second quarter. Then Jeremy almost had a steal under the basket. Basically, the ball ricocheted off of a couple players, and Jeremy got his hands on it, but he wasn't able to secure the ball. And it was, I, it would have been a pretty spectacular play because he just he couldn't prepare for that. Then I put. Uh, Isaiah Thomas scores against Jeremy on a on a drive. It was a very difficult drive and make by Isaiah Thomas. He drove on the left hand side for maybe like a, again like a forty five degree angle. Jeremy was right on him the whole way. He was all over him. It was very good defense, but Isaiah just he, he got he got it he got it in off the backboard. Then he had a steal to. I, I can't remember who it was against, but he stole the ball. That was the second steal of the game, I believe. Maybe it was his first. And then he had an assist for out of bounds. He passed the ball to Ed Davis, who again tried to tip the ball out to Wesley Johnson. So it was almost like a replay of that that three point miss and then make by by Wesley. But when Ed tipped the ball to Wesley, one of the Phoenix Suns got their hands on it, and it went out of bounds. So it could have ended up as an assist for Jeremy, but instead Ed decided to try to pass the ball out. And then made the note that says, L.A. effort greater than Phoenix effort. They just were working harder, and it was it was paying off for them. Then Jeremy had, he missed his third shot of the game. He went in for a layup and got blocked on the left side of the basket it was a tough it was a tough play it was it was he was in some heavy traffic uh he could have made a better decision there but i think the shot clock was running low and phoenix's defense on that sequence was good so he didn't have a lot of places to go with the ball so he just decided to uh uh to try to make a shot out of it and then I just put, you know, he's only made like two bad decisions tonight. He's been playing great. So, again, okay. Then Jeremy got his third foul of the game. Uh, as I thought Eric Bledsoe kind of flopped on the play, but uh, that was Jeremy's third. So, we then, then went to halftime, 51-51, to 51, all tied up. Jeremy had five points, one rebound, two assist, and he had... Three personal fouls, and his plus-minus was a 0-0. Zero, zero. Now we're going to go into the third quarter, which was going to be Jeremy's best quarter of the game, I believe, although I'd have to check that on his uh, 
let me do a calculation here quickly. When he also played well in the fourth quarter, so I, I could be wrong about that. It's possible that the fourth was as good as the third, although he was quite good in the third for sure. Uh, seven. Um, I think the third was his best quarter, although he was good in the fourth as well. Okay, early in the third. As I mentioned earlier, the Suns came out full out at the start of the third quarter. They came out completely focused, and they wanted to bury L.A. as quickly as they could. They wanted to just take away L.A.'s heart as fast as they could, if they could. And they started doing it quick. Uh, They went up four points very quickly. So it was, pardon me, 55 to 51 for Phoenix. And then I put L.A. must step up. Then Jeremy kept them hanging in. Passed the ball, Jordan Hill, for an and-one layup right under the hoop. It was just a perfect play. And like I said, he he fought the urge to get caught up in that Phoenix was scoring. So we got to score quick. We gotta, nope. He took his time. He waited. He saw Jordan open and got the pass to him at just the right moment. And Jordan hit the layup, and he hit the free throw. That made it 55-54 to to kind of keep Phoenix within distance. Okay, then Markeith Morris hit a three-pointer. So, again, like I said, Phoenix was totally locked in at this point. Uh, I put Jeremy had his second turnover, although I did not see it. I can't can't comment on what it was uh, because I didn't mark it down, and I didn't see it when it happened. Then he had his fourth assist to Wesley Johnson for a made jumper. So Jeremy's, again, he's starting to get on a nice roll here, second assist of the quarter. Then he had a score off of a Lakers steal. Then I put bad defense because he didn't quite rotate quickly enough. Eric Bledsoe was sitting like about 45 degrees left of the top of the arc on the three-point line. And Jeremy, I think... Went down to help or, or or was rotated like the defense was switching and he didn't get out to Eric Blood so quickly enough and Eric hit a three point shot so it wasn't terrible just a little bit quicker and and he might have been able to to stop that three point shot okay um, then Jeremy was f- went right into the basket I mean just went super aggressively and was fouled by Markeith Morris. It looked like it might have been a charge, but it wasn't, because I don't think Markeith was in position completely yet. And he, you know, right after he got beat by Eric Bledsoe, he came, went for his get back, and he got it. He made one free throw and missed the other. That made the score 63-61 to 61 Phoenix. So like I said, Phoenix pushing hard, but Lakers and Lynn staying right there with them. Okay. And moving on in the middle of the third, now the Phoenix was up 67 to 61. So that was, they're trying to push out again. Jeremy had his fifth assist and his third assist of the quarter. Great pass to Ed Davis. This was in the half court, and Ed just put down a monster dunk. I just perfect dunk, and it was, it was a great setup. I put Jeremy showing poise. Like I said, he's, you can't make up a deficit all at once. So just run, do what you do, play your offense, and and just be calm. And that's exactly what he was doing, and get good shots, and that's that's what they did. Then Jeremy had a defensive rebound, and then he had another assist for a foul. So he passed the ball to somebody that was going for a score, but they were fouled, and they got shots. Then I put Jeremy Lin taking the challenge and showing something here, showing poise. He's showing that he's a leader. He's showing that he's ready for the next step. Like I said, I will criticize Jeremy when I think he deserves it or when I'm I'm just frustrated with him, which, again, I might be frustrated when someone else is not frustrated with him. But I'm going to praise him, too. He played just... So well tonight. He just played almost perfectly tonight. I just, this is exactly the way that he needs to play, and he really played great tonight. 
Okay, then I put playing good defense versus Eric Bledsoe. Jeremy's locked in on both ends now. Lakers were then it was 67 to 65 Phoenix, but then they pushed the lead up to 71 to 65. Then Jeremy missed a three pointer from about 50 degrees right of the top of the arc. It was a good shot. He should have shot it, and he did. He just missed it. Um, then Jeremy came down and he he made a slight mistake on a fast break. He had Jeremy, he had Jordan Hill to his right side, and he passed the ball to Jordan, but he passed it to him probably about a second too late, and Jordan couldn't really do anything with it, and it ended up Jordan throwing the ball out for a turnover. Now, to be fair, Jordan's turnover wasn't Jeremy's fault. But if Jeremy had given the ball to Jordan uh, like a second earlier, Jordan probably would have scored. So it, it, it it's not a big deal, but it's just, you know, he'll keep working on that little, those little, little things. Then Jeremy had his third and final turnover of the game. And it was in transition. And I, I think... Uh, I can't remember. I think he passed the ball where somebody wasn't or, or something like this. But as right after he made that turnover, he then stole the ball back from Phoenix. So like I said, every time Jeremy made a mistake tonight, he made up for it almost immediately, which is great to see. Like he was he was competitive tonight. We say you got to be competitive and, you know, you got to make mistakes and take it personally. So every time something bad happened tonight, he made something good happen. And that's what we want to see. This is Jeremy at his absolute best. He just has to find that mental place so that he can play like this all the time. And to be fair to him, it's not easy. Look, he had the same thing in Houston. Well, he wants to play his way, but Harden doesn't want him to. Or with L.A., he wants to play his way, but Byron doesn't want him to. Or Kobe's running the offense. So he just has to figure out how he can play like this whenever, whether Kobe's around or if he's on a team with with another ball-dominant player. He's got to figure out that balance. And tonight he was great. Now, again, Kobe wasn't around, so it was easier. But this is the way that he wants to play. And he's capable of playing. This is why people say he's inconsistent or, you know, Byron said earlier it was like, okay, he's it's like he's confident one game and then he loses his confidence. And, and that's, honestly, that's a fairly accurate statement. I don't think it's as simple as confidence. It's more like, well, the the ball dominant guys around now, so maybe I'll step back a little bit more tonight, and then he ends up kind of stepping back too far, or he's not stepping back at all. And so you know, Kobe and Byron thinks he's making boneheaded plays now or whatever. So it's it's just finding that balance. And tonight he was he was great, but it was easier for him because Kobe wasn't around because now he could run the offense. It was it was his show which is why he will do better if he's the guy, if he's, he's kind of given the keys. But he has to show that he's ready to do that in a smart way, and tonight he did that. Tonight, like I said, was a big step forward, not just for him with the Lakers, but for him auditioning for all the other teams around the league. Hey, this guy showed us he can run a half-court system and do it under control. And, and I, like I said, it was one of his it was a great performance. So, he stole the ball and, uh, you know, got the ball back to the Lakers. I think they missed a shot, but it was good that he – actually, no, I think I take that back. They scored off of that. I don't remember who, who got the ball or who got the score, but I don't think Jeremy got an assist or anything. But he – that led to a Phoenix timeout because now the Lakers are only down four with four minutes and 45 seconds left. Phoenix was trying hard to push the Lakers away, but they couldn't. And a lot of the reason why they couldn't shake them was because of Jeremy. So it's like I said, he to be able to play with calmness when you're, the other team is making a run is critical 
for anybody. And it's definitely critical for Jeremy. And it's critical for a lot of young players, inexperienced players. I've seen him many times because his best asset is speed. He just wants to score with the other team and hurry, 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 like Jordan Clarkson does. Tonight he didn't do that. And that's that's a real improvement. So he can build off of this. And I put that him and Wesley were kind of making their own little surge here. And it was it was great. As, like I said, it, it's the same thing with Wesley. We've talked about it all year. Wesley has his own confidence or assertiveness issues or whatever it is. And tonight he he, play, he played well and stepped up big himself. Okay, moving on late in the third. Now Phoenix was back up by seven. Then Jeremy scored a nice left-handed layup off of a pick and roll. And this is where the ball hit the referee and Phoenix got the layup out of it. It was just a, it was it was an important play because it let Phoenix kind of push the lead up. But then Jeremy came back, had his sixth assist of the game, and I believe the fourth of the quarter, Nick Young hit a jumper from Jeremy's pass, and that made the score 78-73. to And then there was a free throw coming up. There were two minutes and 46 seconds left in the third quarter. And this is where Byron took Jeremy out, and that's where the, this is where the game started to go really downhill for the Lakers. Now, it was a six-point deficit, but but Jeremy and Wes were keeping the game close, particularly Jeremy. And now it was going to go away for them once Jordan came into the game. Not just blaming Jordan, but just once Jeremy left, things got out of hand. Okay? Then... Um, I think Jordan missed a shot that was not a great shot. And uh, then Isaiah Thomas came down the other end and threw up an alley-oop dunk to to Brandon Wright. It was a great play, and uh, Brandon's a good jumper, very good jumper. And then I put Brandon Wright changing the game on both ends. So he had an alley-oop dunk, and then he had a blocked shot. And then Eric Bledsoe hit a three. And then I put Phoenix swag now because of Brandon Wright plays. So Jordan, Jeremy went out. Phoenix got on a roll. Phoenix started getting swag. And that's when it started getting away from the Lakers. Okay, then I put Jordan still too. He's still, he's still playing too fast. But he was doing a better job of running the offense tonight. He was. He had good moments tonight more so than he's had in a lot of games. And that's that's good. Okay, then Isaiah Thomas beat Jordan again. He kind of did a little hesitation dribble against him to kind of fool Jordan, and then he went by him for a layup, and that was the score. And so we went to the end of the quarter with Phoenix up 10, 87-77. And uh, like I said, Jeremy's best quarter of the night he played terrific. Um. And the Phoenix was starting to make their move. Okay, going on to the fourth quarter now. Jordan Clarkson missed an open three. But then after that, he hit a nice little step back shot. I gave him six points for the game. Phoenix was still up by 10 at that point. And then Isaiah Thomas did a nice little crossover move against Jordan Clarkson and hit a left-handed layup off the glass. And I he just put in, he was going to work now against Jordan. And Jordan was getting frustrated. Because Jordan was playing decent defense, but Isaiah knows little tricks and stuff, and he's just getting them. It's just like this happens to rookies all the time. So that's what's going on here. And Phoenix was up by 18, so as I said, it was starting to kind of slip away from the Lakers here. And I put Tarek Black monster offensive rebound and put in. The thing with Tarek is he's just a huge guy. I mean, he's not... He's not the tallest guy, but he's so big. I mean, he's probably 255, 260 pounds. And he just he just takes up space. And it, it's just great to have somebody like that because they're going to get a bunch of offensive rebounds. And with how athletic Tarek is, he's also going to get a bunch of putbacks off offensive rebounds. And that's what he did right there. Now, middle of the fourth, Phoenix still, they're still pushing the lead here. 96 to 82 Phoenix, and then 99 to 82 Phoenix. That's when the Lakers took a timeout, and, and 
uh, right before the timeout was taken, Jordan Clarkson had a turnover, which led to a made Phoenix three-pointer. Byron was frustrated, and this is when Jeremy's going to go back into the game. Seven minutes and 37 seconds left in the game. L.A. down 17. Okay. Like I said, Byron put Jeremy back into the game, in my opinion, because he didn't like the way Jordan Clarkson was running the offense. Now, that's the same reason why Byron will often take Jeremy out and put Ronnie in for him because he doesn't like the way Jeremy's running the offense. So this is what it is. If Jeremy plays Byron Bull, he's going to get more playing time. Tonight he played Byron Bull, and he played it great. So if he plays like this, Byron's going to play him. Like I said, he benched Jordan. He benched Jordan pretty quick tonight because Jordan made a couple mistakes in a row quick. And that's when the game really got out of hand. So, okay, you're out. It's like what Mikhail used to do. He'll bench him, but if you're playing well, he'll keep you in. Hot, hot stock, cold stock. If Jeremy keeps playing like this, I don't know if Byron's going to start him or not, but he'll have a chance to start again, and he's going to get a lot more minutes because Byron just he wants he wants the offense run a certain way, and he wants the guys to play defense. Okay. Then uh, I put, yep, offense being run properly tonight. This is the way that Byron wants it, and it's, it's key for Jeremy because this is, again, this is what Byron wants. Then Jeremy had a tough defensive play because he – Phoenix came down in transition, and they had two men spotted up on the three-point line. And Jeremy had to pick which one of them to guard. And he ended up picking the wrong one, and the other one hit a three-point shot. It's kind of tough to blame that on Jeremy, though, because uh, if he would have picked the other guy, then that guy would have passed to the other open guy. So it was just it was just tough defensive sequence. Then he had an assist to Nick Young for a made three-pointer. So he's starting to get into that groove, which was about to heat up. And then Isaiah Thomas hit a catch-and-shoot three over Jeremy, which was a really tough play because Jeremy was actually in pretty good position to guard the shot. But now Phoenix had super swag. They had a big lead, and Isaiah Thomas was feeling good, and so da 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 Now that made the score... 105 Phoenix, 86 Lakers. This was as big as the lead was going to get. It was a 19-point lead with about uh, maybe about six minutes and four seconds left or so. But just when the game looked like it was completely over and it was just going to be blowout city, now the Lakers were going to start to begin or going to, sorry, start to begin. We're just about to begin another Jeremy Lin-led comeback that was going to be starring Jeremy Lin and Swaggy P. And that comeback began with a two-point basket, which made the score 105-88 to for the Suns. They're still up 17 points with five minutes and 56 seconds left in the the fourth quarter, and then we got a television timeout. What what happens in NBA games is usually you will get a timeout in the middle of the quarter, and neither team calls it. It's just it's for television. They take a break. They run commercials and this type of a thing. And so you'll usually see timeouts with like five minutes and 50 seconds left or five minutes and 56 seconds left because that's when – uh there's a break in the action. And so as soon as they can get one when it's like less than six minutes, they'll do it. I think there's also one under three minutes or something like that. So at that point in time, again, Lakers down 17, but we're we're just getting going in some ways here. Come out of timeout, Jeremy finds Nick Young for a made three-pointer. They're still coming back. They're still kind of barely within striking distance are the Lakers. Then I put that the turnovers had killed the Lakers all night long, which I I mentioned earlier in the video. Then I put, then Tarek Black went down with the ankle injury. And 
I'm glad it wasn't a worse injury. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Uh, we'll see. If it's a bad sprain, he could miss a couple of weeks. I really don't know. I uh, just haven't had a chance to get the update. Then Jeremy got a steal, and he ran down the court, passed the ball to Nick Young for another three-pointer. I put, now the comeback is is on. And then after that play, then the Lakers came down. Tarek Black was still on the ground because he hadn't run down the court because he had hurt his ankle. So then they took another timeout, I think, so uh, so that Tarek could be helped off the court. It's like an, almost like an injury timeout. <clears throat> then I put Jeremy made a nice defensive play where – they set up several different screens for Isaiah Thomas, several different picks, and he ran around all of them, was set up about 40 degrees right of the top of the arc for a three-pointer, but Jeremy was close enough to him to challenge it. Isaiah missed it. And now we're down to an 11-point lead with just five minutes left as we went into this timeout so that Tarek could get helped off of this injury. So... In, I don't know, a minute or something like that, or, or a minute and a half, this lead had been cut down from 19 points to 11 points, with still five minutes left in the game. Then, uh, Ryan Kelly, unfortunately, had a turnover for the Lakers. But then after that, I think the Suns missed. Jeremy got the ball in his hands, and he did a in-transition he did a drive, draw, and dish, which is draw draw the defense, drive to the basket, draw the defense to you, and then pass the ball out to a shooter. He did that. He passed the ball out to the right corner for Nick Young. Nick Young hit a three-pointer, and he was fouled. So it was a four-point play possibility. Nick hit the free throw. That cut the lead down to 105 to 98. So now we're at a seven-point deficit. And the Lakers had made up 12 points off this lead in like two minutes of game time. So it looked like, whoa, this, this could really happen. They might actually get this win. Then uh, Eric Bledsoe was fouled by Nick Young. He hit one free throw out of two, I believe. That made the, the, the lead back up to eight points. And then Wes Johnson missed a three-point attempt that would have cut the lead down to five points. All right. But then Jeremy forced a turnover against Eric Bledsoe. Basically, Jeremy was coming up to guard Eric Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe wanted to move the ball. I guess he, I don't know, he just wanted to get away from Jeremy or something. And he passed the ball out of bounds to nobody. So, and then the, the Lakers scored again. And that made the score 106 to 100. So the lead had gotten down to six points. From 19 points to six points in just a few minutes of game time. Unfortunately, that was as close as the lead was going to get. And the Lakers would not score for the rest of the game. So Phoenix was going to score the next nine points. They were going to end the game on a 9 nothing run. Dragic got a layup. Then Jeremy missed a long two-point attempt. Jordan Hill got the rebound. They did a jump ball, and I said it earlier. Jordan Hill tipped the ball. He won the tap. He controlled it. He tapped it back to his guys. Unfortunately, Goran Dragic controlled it and ran for a lap. That made it 110 to 100. Then Nick Young had a turnover. Then Nick Young had an offensive foul. And then Phoenix came down and missed, and they got like two offensive rebounds, and that was it. But the Lakers had their chances. They made a great comeback there at the end. I mean, and once again, that was led by Jeremy primarily, and also also Nick. I mean, Nick hit the shot, so you definitely got to give him credit. Overall, it was a great effort by the Lakers. They kept fighting. They never gave up. They had a real chance to really to win the game, certainly in the first half. And then even with the comeback, they could have won this game. They could have pulled this game out, even after they went down 19 points. 
I did not get to see any post games. I don't know what Byron said. I just haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, hopefully he, he gave the team credit. Yeah, they made some mistakes in that period of time where Jeremy was on the bench. The lead did get a little away from him. I, 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 I still like the way they played. I still like the focus they had, the effort they gave. And in uh, a tough situation against a very tough opponent, and as I said, I love the way Jeremy played in this game. Jeremy played great in this game. If he can play like this, game in and game out, I, I, he's not going to have 10 assists every night. But if he can play with this type of discipline and control and focus and effort on both ends, he's definitely... He's ready to regain his starting role here with the Lakers if, if Byron wants to do it. And he's ready to be an everyday, legit starting point guard in the league. No more of these ups and downs and McHale's 29 points, 9 turnovers. This, this version of Jeremy that played tonight can play in a half-court system. He doesn't just have to play transition and play well. I, I he played great tonight. He really did. Uh, so I'm very happy for him, and I'm happy for the team. I said it. Uh, look, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen with with are the Lakers going to keep Jeremy? Does Jeremy want to stay? I don't know. But after a game like tonight, it certainly makes it easier for the Lakers to want to stay with Jeremy in some capacity. Whether I don't know if they envision him as a starter or not, but they certainly can say, you know, we want this guy around. This guy can play. And he's adapting to Byron's system. So I'm I said I'm I'm happy. Yeah, they they didn't win and I know I'm not a tanking person and all that, but this was a really good effort against a very good team. And uh, I like what I saw, and I love the way Jeremy played. Like I said, uh, maybe it wasn't his best game, but it was my favorite game of him this year as a starter. I just thought he played fantastic, and I'm eager to move on to the next game. I mean, certainly I don't want Ronnie to stay hurt, but I'm eager for Jeremy to get more opportunities. So uh, we're certainly looking forward to that. And speaking of the next game, let's talk about that then now. That game will take place coming up two days from now. So on Wednesday, January 21st here in the United States. And it will take place at 8 p.m. on the Eastern East Coast, which means 5 p.m. Pacific time out in Los Angeles and all of the West Coast. And that means it will take place Thursday, January 22nd at 9 a.m. in China, Taiwan, and in the Philippines, and it will be against the New Orleans Pelicans in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Pelicans have gotten a little bit better, but they've been missing Anthony Davis recently. I have no, I don't know if Anthony will play in that game or not. If he doesn't play, that would certainly make things a whole bunch easier for the Lakers. Anthony Davis is, um, he's just a rising superstar. Uh, some of the numbers he's putting up this year are just, it's its incredible. It's unbelievable. So uh, he's a power forward. He can block shots. He can rebound. He can score. He's efficient. So um, like I said, I, I want Anthony to be healthy, but if he misses that game, I'm okay with that too. So we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. So that's two days from now. Again, uh, good stuff tonight. I'm I'm perfectly content with what I saw. That's 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 what I'll say. So, thumbs up, thumbs down. Your comments below. We also in the video description below the video player will have information so you can check out the artist of the artwork you're looking at right now, Gary Chen, who is an, a blogger and artist in Taiwan. He does great work, as you can see for yourself right here. Gary is a member of the Jeremy Only Lynn Garden fan group, 
which has been terrific for us. They're a great group of people, and we certainly appreciate Gary letting us use his work and all of the, the contributions of, of the Jeremy Only Lynn Garden people. Also in the video description, highlights of this game. You can go check them out for yourself. You're definitely going to want to see the Jordan Clarkson dunk. That was pretty sweet. That was really nice. And see, check out the Jeremy highlights. He had a bunch of highlights in this game. So uh, look for those. Look for the Jeremy, Jeremy highlight people on YouTube. Do great work themselves. And how you can come and join the Conservative Media Facebook group. And how you can follow us on Twitter. All of that information also in the video description below the video player. Once again, I am PFE Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Look, I'm, like I said, I'm happy. I'm good. Uh, this was a step forward for the team as a whole. It was a step forward for Jeremy as a player and as a Laker. You don't usually say that about games that you lose by 15 points and when you're dropping to 12 and 30 on the season. This was a good game for L.A. This was, this was progress for this team and for Jeremy and for others on the team as well. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. And I'm, I'm ready. I'm looking forward to the New Orleans game to see what the team could do against them. So that is it for now. Hope you're having a great night, a great day, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Staying warm in the Northern Hemisphere, staying cool in the Southern Hemisphere, down in Australia, South America, Africa. I, my eyes are now focused on the Australian Open Tennis Championship, which, of course, is one of the four majors of the, the tennis season. Watching a little bit of Roger Federer yesterday as well as uh, Rafa Nadal. In fact, Federer played someone from Taiwan whose um, his name was Lu. Yen something Lu. I can't remember his name, but... Uh, he played a good match against Federer. Uh, it was a first-round match, and Federer won straight sets, but Lou really he gave him some problems, particularly in the third set. Uh, it was a good performance. Both guys looked like they were – it was a good match. You know, it was a friendly match, and uh, so that was cool to see. I, I didn't – I've never heard of that man before. Uh, I guess he's a 31-year-old professional from, from Taiwan in tennis, and uh, he, like I said, he put up a nice match yesterday. I love tennis, like I love basketball, though I don't like tennis as much as I like basketball, but I enjoy watching tennis, and uh, so I'm eager to see the, uh, to follow the two weeks of the Australian Open, we might be doing some coverage of that, of course we've done a lot of tennis coverage in the past, so that's it, if you're down in Australia, like Melody and some other people, maybe you can, uh, I don't know, if you're close to Melbourne, I guess you can go check out some of the matches for yourself if you like to do that. So, okay, that is it. Take care. Have a, Again, have a great night, a great day, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. We'll be talking to you soon, just a couple of days. And, of course, come and hit us up on Twitter. We're around there when we can be, so we'll look for you there, too. Take care.